Here we're going to look at a solution to a nice number theory problem from the 1998 International Math Olympiad. So this is question four. Our goal is to determine all positive integers, in other words, natural numbers, x and y, such that x times y squared plus y plus 7 divides x squared y plus x plus y. Now let's go ahead and recall what it means for one number to divide the other. So m divides n if there is a k in the integers such that n equals mk. So in other words, m divides n if n is a multiple of m. So for example, 2 divides 4 because 4 is a multiple of 2. Maybe 10 divides 120 because 120 is a multiple of 10 and so on and so forth. Okay, before we look at a solution, I wanna give you guys a couple of hints. So my first hint is that if D divides A and D divides B, then D divides any linear combination of A and B. So anywhere, in other words, D divides A times U plus B times V for all U and V, which are integers. So this is a pretty common trick when it comes to these types of divisibility questions. And then my next hint is that you should be looking for an infinite family of solutions together with a few sporadic solutions. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go with these hints and we'll come back with the solution. Okay, so let's jump into a solution. So let's go ahead and suppose we have two positive integers, x and y, such that we have this divisibility relationship. In other words, suppose that we have a solution. Now we want to find some rules that that solution must follow. So in other words, we've got x, y squared plus y plus 7 divides x squared y plus x plus y. Great. Now another thing that I want to do is notice that for all x and y, which are natural numbers, this term over here, xy squared plus y plus 7, will divide itself. So anything always divides itself because it's a multiple of itself with that product being 1. So I'm going to write that down. So we have xy squared plus y plus 7 divides xy squared plus y plus 7. So it may not seem like that will help very much, but it will, especially if we use the first hint, which will now show us that this xy squared plus y plus 7 will divide any combination of those two, any linear combination, I should say. So let's maybe go ahead and notice that we have that. So we have xy squared plus y plus 7 is now going to divide a times x squared y plus x plus y plus b times x y squared plus y plus 7. And this is going to be true for all integers a and b. But now the fact that it's true for all integers a and b means we can choose a and b so that this thing becomes nice. So let's maybe write that down. So choose A and B so that the starred thing is nice. And what do I mean by dice? Well, maybe we could cancel out the most complicated term in each part, but what's arguably the most complicated term in each part? This x squared y and this xy squared. So that means we can set x equal to y and b equal to negative x and it will have the appropriate cancellation. So let's do that. So let's set, like I said, a equal to y and b equal to negative x. And now notice that that tells us that x y squared plus y plus 7 must divide, so notice we're gonna have an x squared y squared, that's gonna cancel with an x squared y squared. We're gonna have an xy, that's gonna cancel with an xy from the b. And then next, we're going to have a y squared minus a 7x, and that does not cancel. So we have y squared minus 7x. Okay, so we've formed this divisibility relationship, which is arguably a lot simpler than the one we started with.
Okay, so that's a good place to stop this board. I'll move this to the top and then we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, we simplified the problem quite a bit. In particular, we showed that if X and Y work, in other words, they make this condition satisfied, then in fact, we have XY squared plus Y plus seven must divide Y squared minus seven X. Now the next thing that I wanna do is break this into two cases and these two cases will help us finish this off. So the first case will be that y squared minus seven x is bigger than or equal to zero. And then the second case will be that y squared minus seven x is less than zero. But I'm gonna write that a slightly different way. I'm gonna write that as seven x minus y squared is bigger than zero. Notice that's equivalent. Okay, so now let's work on this first case. And I'm gonna do that by looking at a nice inequality. So notice that this y squared minus seven x is most definitely smaller than this term right here. And that's because we have an x y squared here. We know x times y squared is always gonna be bigger than y squared. And then we know that y plus seven is always gonna be bigger than ne negative seven x. So let's maybe put that down as something that we notice. We have y squared minus seven x. I'm gonna go ahead and write that's bigger than or equal to zero over here. And it is strictly less than x y squared plus y plus seven. But now notice this divisibility relationship can be used to write y squared minus seven x as d times x y squared plus y plus seven. Notice that's the definition of divisibility. Now I'm gonna insert this version of y squared minus seven x into the inequality up here. And that's gonna give me zero is less than or equal to D and then x y squared plus y plus seven, which is strictly less than x y squared plus y plus seven. Now the next thing that I wanna do is divide all three parts of this inequality by x, y squared plus y plus seven. So notice we can do that because we know that is definitely non-zero. And that's because this is a non-negative number, this is a non-negative number, and then this is seven. So if we divide by this whole term, let's see what we get. We're gonna get zero is less than or equal to d, which is strictly less than one. And then also we know another condition on D and that is D is an integer. And that's because we have this divisibility relationship up here which is built off of D being an integer in the first place. But what does that tell us? That tells us that D equals zero which furthermore tells us that Y squared minus seven X equals zero. Just plugging D into this equation right here. So that tells us we have Y squared equals seven X. But now, notice that that tells us that y squared is a multiple of seven, but y squared being a multiple of seven tells us that y is a multiple of seven, so we can say that seven divides y. But now from this, we can go ahead and write down that y equals seven times m, where m is some natural number, but then if y is equal to seven times m, then it follows that x equals seven times m squared. So x equals seven times m squared, where again, m is some natural number. So this gives us our infinite family of solutions. So our infinite family is given by seven m squared comma seven, where m ranges over all natural numbers. Okay, great. So now let's move on to the second case, which is when seven X minus Y is bigger than zero. Notice that's equivalent to saying this thing over here is less than zero. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So now we're gonna use the fact that X Y squared minus seven Y plus seven divides seven X minus Y squared. And then that's gonna allow us to write this. So we have X Y squared plus Y plus seven is less than or equal to seven X minus Y squared. So if it divides seven X minus Y squared, which is a positive number, then it has to be less than or equal to that. And then furthermore, it's bigger than or equal to X times Y squared. And then we can extend the inequality this direction to say that this is less than seven X. So now looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality, we see that y squared is less than seven, 
But that gives us two subcases, and those subcases will be y equals 1 or y equals 2. Notice we can't have y being anything bigger than 2 because we would get y squared is bigger than 7. So we're going to leave this y equals 2 case for you guys to work on. Maybe post in the comments what you get for your solution. And then we're going to work on this y equals 1 case, but we don't quite have enough room, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. So let's see where we are. To this point, we have constructed a family of infinitely many solutions given by x comma y equals 7m squared comma 7m, where m is running over every natural number. And then furthermore, we also showed that there are two or there may be sporadic solutions built off of y equals 1 or y equals 2. I'll leave you to investigate the y equals 2 case for homework, and we're going to look at the y equals 1 case. But before we do that, I want to notice that this divisibility condition over here, when we set y equal to 1, turns into x plus 8 divides x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, and then furthermore, earlier we talked about linear combinations in divisibility, and we talked about how xy squared plus y plus 7 must divide a linear combination, which we could write a xy squared plus y plus 7 plus b x y squared, sorry, that should be x squared y plus x plus y. So now what I want to do is set y equal to 1 in this that we constructed earlier and see what we get. So now setting y equal to 1 in that will give us the following. So we'll have x plus 8 must divide a times x plus 8 plus b times x squared plus x plus 1. Great. Now what we want to do is choose an A and B so that this simplifies. And maybe what's a good way to think about this simplifying? Well, maybe decreasing the degree over on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and pick A equal to X and B equal to negative 1. Notice that's going to kill the X squared term over there on the right-hand side of the divisibility. So we get X plus 8 now divides... So we're going to have 8x minus x plus 1, so it's going to be 7x minus 1. So that's what we get when all of that stuff cancels. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got x plus 8 divides 7x minus 1, but we also know that x plus 8 divides itself. So we're going to play this game again. So maybe we'll write it like that. Also, x plus 8 divides x plus 8, which tells us that x plus 8 must divide, maybe we'll say c x plus 8 plus d 7x minus 1, and this is going to be true for all integers c and d. Now, playing the same game again, we'll choose C and D so that it simplifies the right-hand side of this divisibility. And how would we simplify it this time? Well, maybe let's do it so that the X term cancels. So let's pick C equal to 7 and D equal to negative 1, and let's see what we get if we do that. So that's going to give us X plus 8 divides... So we're going to have 7x minus 7x, and then we'll have 7 times 8, that's 56, minus a negative 1, so that's 57. Another thing to notice is that 57 has a fairly simple prime factorization as 3 times 19. So that tells us we've got divisors of 57, which are 1, 3, 19, and 57. But we know that x plus 8 is also a divisor of 19, so that only gives us a couple of possibilities for x plus 8. So we get x plus 8 equals 1, so that's one of the divisors. x plus 8 equals 3, so that's another divisor of 57. x plus 8 equals 19, that's another one. And then x plus 8 equals 57, that's the last divisor of 57. And as we can see, there's no solution to this equation where we take x to be a natural number. Same thing here, but there are solutions to these two.
So this one has a solution of x equals 11, and this one has a solution of x equals 49. So that'll give us two more solutions. So let's maybe write that, more solutions. So we have x equals 11, y equals one, because remember that was our original setup here, and then x equals 49, y equals one. So up to this point, we've got these two sporadic solutions, and then we've got this infinite family of solutions, and then maybe on your own, try to see if you can find any solutions where y equals two, and that's a good place to stop.